Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So you've read the title and spoiler alert, we are doing a DIY fail. Not intentionally, obviously, but yeah, I did this project and it did not turn out very well. I'm gonna show you the journey and the process on this whole mirror update. Essentially, the project is that I took my bedroom mirror during quarantine of 2020, I hopped on the trend and I got really excited and I did the popcorn DIY, like spray foam popcorn insulation on my mirror. And I thought it was fun. It was a good project to just, you know, do something while I was stuck at home. And now it's been a few years and I'm kind of over it. So I thought maybe I'd give it an update, you know? I could carve it down, give it like a nice square shape, put some plaster on it, maybe paint it to add some color. So I did that and it did not turn out very well. I made some mistakes and I will talk about those at the end, but I'm not really recommending this project because it took forever. It was very time consuming, it was very frustrating. And yeah, it was just overall not fun. I'd say buy a new mirror if you're um, in the same boat that I am. Nevertheless, I'm going to show you the journey of this whole makeover and um, you let me know what you think. I can live with the end result. That doesn't mean that you should. So here we go. This is my DIY fail. Enjoy. Let's get this project started. Using this carving knife that I found at the hardware store, it's for drywall but I thought it would work just fine, and what do you know, it did. This was probably the most fun part of the project. It gets less fun as I went along. I went around the entire frame, I went on the inside, on the outside, just trying to get it squared off and nice and even. Of course, that did not work. I did not get it nice and even, but it was fun and very satisfying to see all of this foam carved like butter. You can see there's like a lot of little pockets, a lot of little holes because of course this was the popcorn style foam so it's not even, it's not perfect. But I'm just trying to get it so there's as little amount of holes and gaps as possible. I just carve and carve and carve and keep carving until I'm happy with the shape. Okay, so now we're gonna start scraping around the edges to just try and clean it up because when I had painted over the foam before, it got all inside the little cracks and onto the mirror and it was a total disaster. So I'm just trying my best to clean that up and scrape off any of that excess paint and the foam. And then I'm giving it a light sand. Make sure you guys are wearing a mask anytime you do any type of sanding because you don't want any of that crap in your lungs. It's always good to watch some show, listen to a podcast, which, which is what I was doing, listening to podcasts, watching shows the whole time. We're gonna tape around the inside border and get ready for the plaster. We're putting on the first coat of the joint compound and this is just a base layer I'm just trying to cover up the main portion of the foam and I'm not worried about getting it too even because I'm going to do another coat. This took a lot of time. You can see now we're watching a basketball game. I'm just using a small like two inch spatula to spread along all of the compound, getting it in the nooks and the crannies, trying to scrape off any of the excess. It's a challenge. It's not a quick process. This probably took me hours to do, like literally hours. I cut it back as to not bore you. But this is what it looks like at the end of the first coat. All right, checking in, it's been a couple days since I did the first layer of the joint compound and it's looking a bit cracked in some places and there's a lot of bumps and raised areas that are kind of sharp. So I'm gonna scrape that down and then we're gonna do another layer 
and then we'll get ready to paint it, which I'm still deciding between some different colors, but I got my, you know, lovely work clothes on here and I'm just working in the living room because that's the only space we have. So I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll get started. So as you can see, lots of cracking. These pieces I need to scrape down like right there. So I want to do another layer just to fill in all these little bubbles and holes that were in the foam and try and get it nice and even and ready for paint. Okay, so I'm just scraping off any of those bumps with that two inch spatula that I was showing here. And then I'm gonna go in and vacuum off any of the um, little flakes that came off. I do wanna mention that I am propping up the mirror on some paint cans, some like quart size paint cans to keep it off the ground. And then I'm going in again with that two inch spatula. So now I'm just basically spreading that on but then I'm gonna use a larger spatula and smooth everything out. And this is really gonna help kind of minimize all of the lines and the texture that you're getting from the smaller spatula. Now this has to dry for 28 to 48 hours, which I did do that. And we're trying to get ourselves prepped and ready for paint. So I'm sanding down using just like a medium grit sanding block that I got at the paint store. Of course, wearing a mask, always protect yourself. And I'm just going in with some primer. I'm using, I think it's one, two, three bullseye primer, something like that just to seal the compound and give a nice prepped surface for the paint. Let's talk about the paint color. I was unsure of what color to choose. I did use the Sherwin-Williams app. Um, they have this like color app and you can match colors to a photo. I found these photos that I liked for the color that I was hoping to go for. It's kind of like a bluish gray and I used the app and I was able to sort of match it to a color that I wanted. So I ended up picking Downing Slate. Not gonna lie, I was kind of freaking out because when I was putting it on I was worried that it was very gray. It wasn't giving me any blue tones, it was just very gray. But alas, it dried and yeah, all is well in the world. I did do two coats. This was the end of the first one. This is me the next day saying, I cannot wait to be done with this project. I'm so over it at this point. <laughs> I'm very uh, frustrated with how long it's taking. I'm gonna do another coat, but I'm not going to show that because you don't need to see me paint the thing all over again. I would instead like to show you where it all sort of went downhill for me. So in the next clips, you'll see me having a minor meltdown about how poorly this turned out. So I hope you enjoy. Like I'm kind of worried about the way this is gonna peel off. Oh no. Is that the paint peeling off? Yeah. So here we are. This is where we're at in the project. I have tried my best to salvage where we're at. I retaped it and I painted along the edging and I pulled that tape up when it was still wet. That way it wasn't gonna stick and create like a seal, you know? 
I didn't want to peel off the paint any more than I had already done. I will show you the final result here in a moment, but some things that I could have done differently that would have probably changed the outcome quite a bit. I would have removed the tape after I had finished each coat of the joint compound because I think what happened was that I, you know, put the compound on and it created a very like crackly edging and so when I was peeling that up it was coming off in like chunks and like ripping off so I could have removed the tape as it was wet so that way it would have just come off easily and then I could have wiped down anything that would have potentially gotten here next tip would be to do the same thing with the paint when you're taping just tape it down paint it and then remove the tape after you paint each coat pretty much my biggest problem was the whole tape debacle it could have turned out better but who's to say you know when i look at it from a distance it doesn't look that bad you don't really notice it so it's just kind of one of those things just don't get close and you'll be fine i like the color that i chose and i think it's adding something to my room yeah let me know your thoughts i have some more projects coming up i'm gonna do a little dining room transformation thanks for joining me on this journey um please like this if you felt my pain um comment down below what you think and i'll see you in the next one bye